Welcome to Rotary today. I want to uh, welcome all of you. I'm especially ha happy to welcome Matthew from Mountain View Hospital. He has brought his crowd here that are going to give us an interesting program. My name is Tommy Snyder, and I have a company called Master Metabolic. It's a team of metabolic coaches that write programs for people to be successful in whatever their goals are, fat loss, muscle gain, or sports specific, or just quality of life. And we're gonna to touch on some of those scenarios today, but really more about math and, and what's happening to our community now and how we can reverse or aid in that um, scenario, whether it's your own life or someone else's or your family's. Um, but I think what we do here, uh, we have made a few discoveries, which is awesome, is we, we can uh, stabilize blood sugar using meals and exercise together and not using any kind of medication to, to do so. And then we can also, uh, you know, gain muscle uh, if we want to, and we don't have to, you know, use anything else but, you know, food and exercise as well. And each, each week when people come in, uh, they spend uh, 30 minutes with us. We plan out their full week ahead of them, but we also tack tackle the challenges that people have on a daily basis to help them move through it. And like I always say, there's no great athlete that never got anywhere without a great coach, right? And, and I think it's more about seeing the things that we can't see in our own lives because we're so busy outside of ourselves versus inside of ourselves. And I think that's just our culture, that's normal. But I think to be strong, uh, we wanna make sure that we're good at all aspects and, and use good balance. And some of those techniques we're gonna talk about today. Um, we also have uh, three locations in Utah, uh, Salt Lake, uh, Sandy, and Lehigh. And we hopefully will open something around here as well. Now, defining what, what healthy is. Um, can you guys give me some ideas of what, what your opinions are on that? Healthy, give, give me a word, give me, give me something. Not this lunch. Not this lunch. <laughs> it's good for, the, good for the heart though, right? No, it's okay. Um, but when I think about it, it's more or less um, aesthetics, like we all care about the way we look sometimes. And I think, I think that's more or less goes with uh, the way we feel. I think it's more about the way we feel, which translates to the way we look, et cetera, and so on. And I think also, when you, when you sit here and we, we do our jobs or we're with our family, I think cognitive function is very important as well, right? I think a lot of people are using other methods to enhance their co cognitive function, but it can be as simple as using certain foods or just using our bodies in a certain way, uh, which creates the emotion that we wanna feel um, in our daily life. So quality of life obviously is a big deal, um, but that can be a lot of things, right? My, my favorite genre to work with right now is actually 50 and above. And the reason why is because a lot of times as we age, uh, I think what we see is, uh, you know, as kids we're, we're, we're out and about and we're, you know, doing anything and everything that we ever want, physically, mentally, uh, whatever we're inspired to do. But I think as we age, you know, we might see a doctor, we might get some injuries, we might, you know, play, play sports, and then all of a sudden we're not as good anymore, or, you know, whatever we're doing in our daily life that kind of we, we whittle down, I would say, uh, versus kind of ramp up and, and really understand, like, how our bodies are working, how our minds are working together as well. And what we can do is we can breathe new life into that, uh, that body, and I, I think that's the, the main thing, is, like, knowing, you know, how, how things are going to affect us in the future, and, and even in the present, uh, when we feed ourselves right. Now, why are people not achieving their goals? Like, why, why is it so hard? Why does it feel like this mountaintop? And that's what we're gonna cover today. Uh, we're gonna talk about how easy it can be versus how hard it feels like it can be. And I think that's the most important, is when, when you look at something, any goal, you know, whatever you wanna achieve, immediately there's a little bit of fear, right? And, and usually it has to do with experience or, or lack of experience. And I think the main thing is, is that, that when you approach something, you wanna feel like you can actually do it, right? Whether it's a you know, 30 minute hike or you know, uh, running after your grandchildren or what, whatever that may be. Now, the problem is, is all the things that people are trying to do are actually going against what their goals are, right? Because our culture, uh, what happens is our culture grew over time but the thing is our biology and our bodies did not grow with that culture, right? And so it's kind of going against each other and that's why we're having a lot of, a lot of trouble as an American culture that way. Now, what they did is they did a study here uh, in the American Dietetic Association and they found that 95% of all dieters last year 
lost and regained all of their weight inside of that year, 95%. And so basically 100%, right? And so it sounds like a flawed system, right? It doesn't really make sense. People aren't really understanding what's happening. And I think what you're gonna see here is, is in fad diets or whatnot, you'll see calories, protein, carbohydrates, and fats, right? A lot of people are guessing. They're taking away portions of that, right? The thing is, is our body needs all of those things. And so it doesn't really make sense that we're gonna take away those things, right? Um, but how, how do we align it to where you know, our body's efficient and we're not taking away, we're more giving back. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now let's cover some myths. So I think if, immediately what do we do when we try to lose weight, feel better, whatever that is? We eat less, right? Um, and, and a lot of people talk about calorie counting or whatnot, but the thing is, is that's not really what it's about um, because there's so many different things other than calories, but we try to simplify it, or should I say marketing tries to simplify things and tell you one thing to get you to buy because it's quick and easy, right? Um, but it may not be actually the people who are failing at, at dieting, right? Because that 95%, you know, that's, that's pretty, uh, it basically, what do we say? Uh, one of the words, uh, reveals what's really happening here. And really is, is not just about calorie counting. It's not just about fad dieting. It's not just about two weeks of shorting yourself. It's really about long term. And how can you get better as we go versus, you know, I think sometimes we think, oh, you know, this is just who we are and this is how it's gonna be and, then, and so on. Now, what, what we're looking at here is 75% of the US is overweight or obese, right? And that's only going one way, it's not going down. And so how do we interrupt that, that case? And really spreading the knowledge and some of the things that, that I've come to understand with working with such a wide variety of people is that you know, we're all driven on one thing, emotion. And so we talk about logic a lot, but we never talk about emotion. So what we wanna do is figure out how to unite those two and then you can accomplish any goal, right? If you're passionate about it. Myth number two, all of my weight loss is fat loss, right? So when we get on the scale, what are we weighing? Anybody? Not too much. Too much? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too much of something. So uh, maybe clothes, right? Maybe some water that you drank that morning. Maybe if you do it right in the morning, you're not wearing clothes, but maybe you are wearing clothes, I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of things going on there that you really don't understand what's, what's happening within that weight. And so with us, we like to take body fat um, because then we know muscle and fat and then also weight on top of it, right? And, but if you were doing your own program, I'll, I'll teach you some ways to be able to track that uh, for you. Now, America, like I said, is, is, is not accomplishing their goals, but the reason why is what's happening within the scale, right? So if you look at you know, separated muscle versus fat, positive versus negative, right? Um, then we're tracking both, right? And so what's happening here, which all those dieters, is 40% of the scale weight loss is muscle mass. And that, that promotes uh, hormone levels, that promote, promotes strength in the body, it also promotes metabolism, right? So if we, can't, if we can't accomplish those things, how do you think that we're gonna succeed at our goals or dieting or whatever you wanna call it, right? It's not really gonna work very well. The myth number three, so the more the workout, the better. I think I hear this a lot, or I have heard it a lot, to where, oh, I've, I'll just work it off and you know, do a bunch of exercise, right? Um, the challenge with that is if you don't have enough food to support your exercise or your muscle mass, what are you burning? Muscle. Muscle, muscle. yes, instead of fat, and that's not the goal, right? And, but because if you're looking at a scale and you've lost some weight, automatically you think you've won. And that's more marketing, right? So the main thing is, is how do we figure out what's happening and how do we get to the next level, right? This is my favorite picture. <laughs> I kind of covered it with that. It's not, you're safe, you're safe. You had some vegetables on there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the typical American, okay? So let's set the setting. So Mr. Jones is going on a cruise right in eight weeks, it's sunny out. Um, he, he's got to fit in his, his leopard speedo, right? He doesn't want anything hanging out too much. And so he decides to go on a diet eight weeks out. And as you'll see on the left here, he starts at 200 pounds at 30% body fat. And you'll also see that he lost 30 pounds on the scale. And so what happens like, what's happening to him after he loses 30 pounds? His peers are what? 
congratulating him, yeah. right? Congrats. Saying how great he looks, great. right? Yeah, and, and so this is motivating, this is inspiring. And so whatever he was doing in that time, then he's uplifted because he did something, he accomplished something in the time period that he needed. But what I also want you to look at down here is how much fat did he lose and how much muscle did he lose without tracking? You see the difference there? And so what I want you to also understand is that he was able to support a metabolism of 3,000 calories, but now his metabolism supports 2,000 calories, right, per day. So he can burn that in that, that daily sitting. Or, and then, so when he goes back to eat, what do you think he's gonna do? He's gonna gain more weight on top of it, right? And then because he lose, lost all his muscle, now you know, he's in a hole. Exactly. And so when he goes on the cruise, what's he going to do? He's going to eat. Right? That's what we do on cruises. And that's okay. Um, but the thing is, is, you know, how do we create a healthy metabolism that it can withstand vacation, right? And come back and still, still flow and not have to worry about losing more weight after that. Now, let's go over a 12-week program. Let's spread it out a little bit. And let's, let's make sure that we do it right. And make sure that we actually are successful at it and take our time and not harm our metabolisms by actually taking too much food away. But instead, we support his metabolism, we feed his muscle, and make sure that his diet supports his lean tissue in his body. When whether you're a male or female, I think it's really important to understand how much that, how much that is. And so for Mr. Jones, uh, as you can see, he lost more fat and he gained more muscle than he did prior. And so when you add it up here, it looks like 56 pounds of change overall versus only 10 pounds of fat and 20 pounds of muscle loss. And so this is how you would run a, a typical program to be healthy, to be thriving, to be able to kind of push past any kind of uh, plateaus that you're going through. But now look at his caloric uh, energy, right? So he started at 3,000, now, now he's at 4,000. And so you can understand that it doesn't matter what age you are, because I think a lot of people talk about, oh, I, he was born with a you know, fast metabolism. I've heard that before. So metabolism isn't birth, it's earned, right? That's what I always say. And I think that's really important to understand because a lot of people just accept their environment for what it is versus look at it to where there's something that they can achieve. You know? And I think that's because of all the things that are out there, you know, it's telling us we can achieve something, but immediately we're failing. And what if it's not you? What if it's the thing that you're doing, right? Or the thing that you're following? Or, or whatever that is. And so a lot of people that come into our office say, oh, well, I've done this, I've done that. But the thing is, is I feel like it's unachievable. And that's not actually the person's fault, right? But too many people are feeling that, so then they just give up and then just continue on, which doesn't make sense to me. Now, let's look at them both together and really understand what it looks like. Leopard Speed on the left. <laughs> and uh, you see the difference between the two. Um, but I think the, the difference between the two is an understanding of what's typical versus not typical, right? Or what we could be versus what we're doing. But the thing is, is if, you could, if you could imagine the way this person feels and the way this person deals with life versus the other one, it's gonna be completely different, all right? Now, this is some of our clients, and you can see the difference between the muscle mass how the fat evolved in all of them. And you can tell they all came from different backgrounds, athletes, uh, whether they're overweight, they're male, they're female, doesn't matter. Um, it all pertains, it all goes to one way. And that's what happens when you give yourself enough versus don't give yourself enough. And I think that's the difference between what we're talking about versus not. And, but the thing is, is a lot of people say, you know, well, Tommy, you know, how is this even possible, right? You're, you're talking about numbers here, but you know, give me some answers. And so that's what we're gonna talk about now. Um, with business, I think a lot of you are, are more business oriented than, than most. And you'll, you have a plan at first, right? You have, you have things that you have to execute on a daily basis, weekly basis, whatever that is, and even monthly basis, and you execute, and you're successful at it, right? The same thing goes with these building blocks as well. A lot of people don't like to talk about these things, but what if you could eat cheese, what if you could eat turkey sandwiches, what if you eat tacos and pasta and things like that and still reach your results, right? Because a lot of people think they can't. But the main thing is, is when you have all the aspects and all the pieces in play, then you can do anything you want pretty much at that point. And as far as 
balance goes, we have four here. It's uh, mindset, nourishment, uh, exercise, and coaching. And coaching can also be accountability, holding yourself accountable. Um, now, what's number one? Nourishment, right? So, and I chose nourishment because nutrition and dieting like really hurts my ears. It's like the last thing I wanna hear. I, I wanna talk about giving back versus like taking away or harming in any way. And so when you, when you look at nourishment, I wanna turn it into a positive instead of a negative um, because we can do anything once we understand the numbers behind it. And so let's go back to Mr. Jones. In a typical way, somebody would write a, write a diet for themselves, right? So he's probably not gonna eat in the morning, but when he gets, when he gets you know, to work about 10 a.m., you know, what is he gonna have? Like a, like a yogurt or a string cheese or something like that because he wants to be healthy, right? And then he goes to lunch with his peers and, and what do you order when you're being healthy for lunch? Salad. Salad, yes, off the healthy meal. So, or off a healthy menu. And so that's 500 calories. And then Mr. Jones goes to work out and you know, he, he's you know, working hard because he's, he's imagining that speedo. And then all of a sudden uh, his wife says, let's go out to dinner. I, I don't want to cook. And so they go to Cheesecake Factory. It's <laughs> my, my favorite example. <laughs> so, so he chooses, you know, f you know, maybe a filet or a steak and some brown rice and a salad. And you can actually get that at Cheesecake Factory. But what happens at the end after the wife's done with dinner? What do you have to have? Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Yes, you have to. Um, and obviously it's too big for one person to eat. So Mr. Jones has to share. And he's been good all day, right? Or he's saving up. Rewarding he's rewarding himself in some way for his hard work. And that's great. Um, but now he's up to a 2,500 calorie meal, half of what you said. But I know that we can do 5,000 for sure. Um, and when you look at this spectrum, I want, you, I want to ask one question. When are you utilizing the most energy of your day? Morning. Morning? Not after dinner. Not after dinner. <laughs> Interesting. And so this is the way sumo wrestlers train <laughs> to gain weight. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually training as a, as, a, as a country to be sumo wrestlers, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and this reverts back to emotion, I believe, and culture, right? Because we want to sit down, we want to come home after work, we want to spend time with our family, and that's great. But what we're not paying attention to is our bodies the rest of the 80% of the day. And I think fueling your work, fueling your activity, all those things, it's important. It's one of the rules of nutrition. So when we understand that, then our energy levels peak and we won't be so ravenous at night because there's no stopping anyone that's, you know, that's even motivated, right? Because we're gonna get our calories no matter what. Now, it makes sense, like, so if Mr. Jones had a 2,400 calorie diet, that he's gonna spread out his meals evenly throughout the day. Unfortunately, like you guys said earlier, is that you're using more earlier in the day. So this would be wrong. And this is how people are using uh, their diets to basically lose weight. And so you heard calories in versus calories out maybe, right? And that's the simple way to go about it. But there's so many different things within a calorie, right? There's carbs, there's fats, there's proteins. So why would you just, what if you just choose all carbs? Or what if you just choose all sugar? Or all meat or whatever, right? Is that gonna, your hair will start falling out. Your hair, start, your hair will start falling out. That's, that's quite possible, exactly. And, that's, and then what we wanna do is we wanna talk about the right way. Now, like I said, going back to balance, um, the first rule, rule of nutrition is eat at least uh, every three hours is the goal, every th three to four. And when you look at that over time, that's you know, a certain amount of meals per day. And now, if we look at the macronutrients and the micronutrients, what that is, is it's the percentage of calories. So, that, so the rule number two of uh, nutrition is that use good percentages within your calories uh, overall. Because you get different energy from different places, right? So your hair won't fall out. Now, what we also need to do is look at the glycemic index. The way sugar hits your body, a lot of diabetics use this. But are you using lower glycemic starches, medium to low gly gly glycemic starches? And so that will give you lasting energy versus quick energy, right? So we're not all, we're not all athletes in here, but some athletes will use a little bit higher glycemic uh, foods. But overall, to be even and stabilized throughout the day, we wanna make sure we're using low. And then what we've done, and like I said earlier, is that we discovered how to stabilize blood sugar. 
And what that is is different sources of energy compiled together. And we use this source all day long, uh, or this theory all day long. And so we, so we pair a fruit, a low glycemic fruit, a low glycemic starch, and a protein source. And this is how we're able to eat things like tacos and pasta and normal things like waffle or pancakes and, and turkey sandwiches and all those things. Because it's all with good math, but all with good pairings as well. And so if you have a, a faster burning sugar, a fruit, and a slower burning sugar, which is the starch, and then a protein source, that then you're covering all aspects so your hair doesn't fall out. Right? You guys are starting to understand. I like this. Yeah. Um, now, let's go back to the right way we would build this, right? And so what you said is that you use most of your energy the first half of the day, which is absolutely correct. And so it makes sense that earlier in the day, we're going to have a little bit more calories and ready for our battles of the day, right? And we want to make sure that we're enhanced that way. And then if we had enough all day, how hungry do you think you are going to be at the end? Not hungry, right? You're not going to be ravenous like we usually are. Right? And so then you're not going to need 2,000 calories um, versus, you know, and I, and I believe that, you know, as America, we're a recovery nation. So we recover, right? We go to the doctor when we're already sick. We, you know, feed ourselves after we're already starving, you know, those kind of things. And because everything else is more important to us up front. But if we shift to that focus, then everything would change. Um, and then you'd be able to eat all day long, and it's not a bad thing at all. Um, the thing is, the, the challenging thing is what's efficient within your day, right? What foods can you eat and it's efficient and still be successful in your life? That's the challenge. Now, I remember uh, my second grade teacher, uh, would she tell me when we had a big test, the state exams or whatever, um, she said, a eat a good breakfast, right? And so I'm going to give you a figure to walk away with today. Uh, if you don't eat breakfast within 30 minutes of waking up, you have a 300% chance of being obese. If you don't eat breakfast at all, you have a 500% chance of being obese. And so when I heard my teacher, I was like, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but now, as an adult, I actually understand what she was talking about. Now, uh, exercise. And so some, of the, some portions of this uh, stuff might be a little foreign to us, uh, whether it's uh, weight training or challenging your body or cardio or, or whichever. Most people pick like one or the other um, and then, or just food, right? And there's a lot of programs out there that attack you know, one of those things. But how do we bring them all together? and understand the importance of all. So food is 60% of your goal, and ex exercise as far as weight training, resistance training, whatever that is, that can also be Pilates and et cetera. But challenging the muscle, how much are we doing that? 30% of your program should be that. And they say that within you, a year's time or, or whatever, a human should be challenging themselves at least 50% of their life. And I've kind of condensed that down to three days out of seven. Is, is, is an easy goal, easy format. But of course, you want to use progression. So you can start one day and then maybe add another and, and, do, and so on. Now, resistance training, what that, what that does is it breaks down the, the muscle fibers. And then metabolism is bringing in the nutrients from the nutrition and, turning, over the, and turning it over. And that's thermogenic, right? That's thermogenesis. And that's what creates heat in the body and, and consistency. And so a lot of us aren't doing those two together. A lot of us doing our pieces of it, like I said. And cardio is 10%. So, and the reason why cardio is 10%, it's like the cherry on top, right? If we, if we have a Sunday, we still need the cherry, and it's important. And so that little piece is very uh, finicky, I guess. Because if we do too much, what are we going to burn? Muscle, right? Um, but if we do just enough and just the right amount, then we, we can still burn just fat and still make sure that our muscle is still enhanced at that point. Now, if you look at the two, and this is also another uh, fact, is that uh, with any kind of weight training or resistance on the muscle, you burn calories 48 to 72 hours after. Cardio, you only burn calories five to seven hours after, right? So it kind of makes sense that we pepper things like throughout the week to be, to be really efficient. And so whatever you guys are trying to schedule your own stuff, that's how I would schedule it. I love this picture. So <laughs> if you look at this, this is just an extreme example of two uh, different sides of things. So one's a sprinter, one's a, an extreme marathon runner, right? And you can see the difference that back up kind of what, what I was saying there. And so if, if you think about in caveman terms, when we were a caveman, what did we do? If we, we hunted, we gathered, right? And so a caveman didn't wake up at 6 AM and say, I think I'm going to run for three hours or two hours and train for a marathon. 
it's not really human, right? But what is he going to do? He's going to walk. Or if he's hunting, he's going to catch his prey within 30 seconds. Maybe 60 if he has, like, you know, max speed for longevity. But if he's not going to catch his prey in that time, he's probably not going to achieve it, right? So what is that, sprinting or low high heart rate for a long period of time, right? So you with me here? So if you have a low heart rate and you're doing cardio, then, then that's consistent. So fast walking, a lot of my clients do. Um, slow jogging sometimes, or we're going to do a little bit of interval stuff if you're ready for it. But mostly just walking. You can finish the whole thing just walking. And then the weight, weight training portion obviously can be either done through cardio, because this guy, he obviously looks like he does a little bit. Um, but then also short distance also helps as well, as well with a little bit of rest in between. Now, let's move on to something else. So mindset. So mindset can be a lot of things, right? Um, and a lot of you I know have great mindsets, just the way we started our day. But the challenging thing is how does food interrupt mindset, right? And I'm gonna talk about sugar for a second, um, not too long, because I know that you know, our culture is built on this. But how does sugar affect our mind and our body, right? And so what I say is there's, there's three things that happen. So initially, you know, sugar comes and goes, and the high only lasts one second, right? You have it a little bit, and it's gone, right? Number two is that sugar is the only thing in the world that, that blocks leptin, and that is, that is what happens when your body feels full. And so if I was to give you like a thermogenic food combination with fruit, starch, protein, your body feels full. But if I was to sprinkle sugar all over it, what happens is, is your body doesn't know it's full anymore because it blocks that, right? It blocks leptin. And then what happens after that, when your blood sugar goes up and crashes down really quick, you're really happy and high, and then all of a sudden you want to lay down. Um, and the problem with America, and I know some of us don't drink caffeine in here, but the number one supplement in the world is caffeine. And so as they're going down, they're trying to go back up, and they're getting crossed, right? So their adrenal glands are smoked, and their, their sugar high is gone. So the high is gone, you're not full, and you're depressed about it because your blood sugar is so low. It's honestly factual, which is kind of funny. So what do you do? Start over again, right? Which is interesting to me. Um, and, I, and I like to let our clients know what's happening to them biologically um, because a lot of us think that, oh, we're, this is something that we're emotionally doing or this is something we're choosing to do. What if it's not something we're choosing to do, right? If you make a big thing of cookies, what happens? You'll have one, never satisfied, right? I walk by that thing and if I see it, I'm gonna grab it, right? And, and this is something that stay-at-home moms deal with every day. And so I work with a lot of stay-at-home moms, obviously, in Utah. And, and that's the biggest thing, is 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, what happens? Their kids get home, it's snack time, right? And so that, that is conditioned. That's, that's conditioned in them. And bio, biology-wise, they can't get away from it because they're sprinkling a little bit of sugar on stuff. Does that make sense? It's kind of interesting. And so this is the kind of... Uh, you know, circle of life that we're living, and it's normal. It's normal. And I, th I don't think anybody should feel bad about it, but how do we maneuver it to where we're happy and we achieve the things that we want to achieve, right? And still be uh, in our culture and do the things and, and be who we want to be and be happy and all those other things, right? And that's balance. But how much of which equals what balance, right? And how to understand that and get to the goals that we want to achieve. Now, I, I mentioned accountability, I mentioned coaching earlier. And so when you're writing your own program or, or doing your own thing, what you wanna do if you're gonna track weight or um, inches, I think that's the biggest thing. So inches versus weight are important because you can tell what happens. And online there's actually a formula that you can track your body fat using inches. And so that'd be the most efficient way um, if you're ever doing something. And then obviously we do coaching, which is important as well. And, but the main thing is, is vet your coaches, right? Because they might not know everything that they're actually trying to get you to you know, do. Now, story. So proof is in the pudding, right? So you, you hear me talking. I know you've seen some more before and after pictures. But the main thing is, is you know, I'd rather hear from someone else to help you understand you know, what's really happening to people in our office and, or using these methods. So this is Matt. And Matt is 400 pounds. And this is a, a typical client that comes in. Obviously, not everybody's 400 pounds, but um, this is a guy. He comes in. And he says, "You know, hey, I have no energy." His dad raised him, 
So it was all about quick fix meals. And by the time he was in high school, he was already, I think, 350, he said. And so at 350 in high school, he's still a kid, how do you think he feels? This is normal for me. This is how I was born. This is how I'm supposed to be, right? And so he continues his life all the way to 37 like this, right? And so he has, uh, I think, four kids. And what he's telling me is he'd go home from work. He'd stop by a drive through He'd get two hamburgers and fries. He'd eat it. He'd go home. He'd have his normal dinner an hour later and fall asleep on the couch. He couldn't play with his kids. He didn't do anything. He went to work, came home, and that was it. And he, he knew this, but he didn't know a way out, right? Because some of us don't know that because we, we only know our own normal, right? We don't know anything else other than that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just let Matt tell the rest of the story. I got a job offer. We were living in St. George, Utah at the time, and the job was up in Salt Lake. So about a year into working there, uh, they invited a fitness company over to come and speak with us about how we can be healthier and better our nutrition. I knew I wanted to make a change, but I had gone through this and tried weight loss plans before. I didn't hold a lot of hope. So when I went to the appointment, it seemed like it was more normal food. Like that, that was my, my big stickler was I didn't know how to eat. I just ate whatever I wanted to when I wanted to. Yeah, so 396 pounds was what the scale read and it made me feel terrible. I hated who I was. Going out with my kids and trying to go hiking or, or walk or something like that or play out in the backyard and and my wife would try to take pictures and I didn't want to have to look at them or let other people see me because I didn't like who I was. So with the push of my wife, it was like, no, we gotta start now. If we wait, you'll probably end up not doing it. And, and so I'm, I'm glad that I had that push. The program is set up and the software is set up that this is where you're at, this is where we'd like to get you in, in this certain amount of time body transformation journey as far as not just weight loss but fitness and where you want to be with your body weekly goals are the way to go with it because you feel like you're accomplishing something every week seeing the numbers drop each week and after a year even so when i hit 15 percent, i thought i thought that was kind of it so physically i didn't start this journey to to get a six pack and to be ripped and to be able to walk around in a tank top and show off you know, big, huge muscles or anything. My, my journey was more health and just being around for my kids more. This journey that I've gone through gives me the opportunity, at least a chance, to be around longer for my kids and, and my family. I always like to give like the most massive example to people so then they feel like their goals are Nothing compared to that. <laughs> Makes us all feel better, right? Um, and, and I think like the shortest mountain to climb, we want to start with that, right? And versus look at some gigantic thing. But I think it's all about steps, right? It's, it's about longevity versus like short-term scenarios. And that's, that's what we believe. And that's why I think we stop, you know, so early. I appreciate you guys sitting and listening. But thank you so much. And uh, let us know if you need anything. Appreciate you.